Sometimes it can be difficult to get motivated to go out and take photos. Sometimes it's difficult to know exactly what you wanna shoot. The weather can be bad. There's lots of things that play into it. Let's talk about how you can get inspired. It's Detour Tuesday. <laughs> Back to tutorials where each and every, each and every Tuesday we bring a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different, and we are talking about how to get inspired when you're not feeling the motivation to go out and take those photos. Now, this is something that I struggle with from time to time. I'll be honest with you, I take a lot of photos for my job. I take photos pretty much every single day of the week, even at the weekends as well, because I love taking photos. But sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to think of something interesting to go and photograph, you know, especially if you want to get out and do it, but the weather's not very good, or you don't know what you want to do, you don't know the genre of the subject, it can be tricky to get inspired. We're going to go over five tips, and then we're going to go over one bonus tip as well. So you can call it six tips if you want, but I'm going to call it five tips and one bonus tip. Tip number one is to explore your surroundings. It sounds really obvious, and I'm sure all of us have already done this, but Sometimes you really have to explore. Now, this doesn't mean going hundreds of miles to another country or going to some Instagrammable location. There are photographic opportunities everywhere. Now, last week we talked about local wildlife and I talked about a series of bushes just around the corner from where I live. Now, this area is very, very uninspiring to look at, but if you wait around, you'll notice there's lots of little birds in the bushes. Lots of interesting little birds darting around, and it's a great photographic opportunity. I recently spent a lot of time in my local park, way longer than I've ever spent there before. I think I spent about five hours in this same bit of woodland that normally I'd spend half an hour, an hour at most, if I'm with the dogs, let's say. And I spent five hours there trying to get different photographs, and I noticed all kinds of interesting things I'd never noticed before. I'm very lucky because I live near places like Beachy Head, which is fantastic, the South Downs in general, which is beautiful, and all kinds of interesting forests and stuff like that. But even if you know your surroundings like the back of your hand, just getting out and taking your time with them, really exploring, going off the beaten path, maybe going down a trail you've never been down before, have a real look around, push yourself a little bit outside of where you're comfortable, and just find a new spot, a new composition, something different. There's a spot near Beltoot Lighthouse up on Beachy Head, which was completely new to me. I photographed that lighthouse for years in what I thought was pretty much every different possible angle. But I found a new spot. This was a little while ago when I was reviewing the Sony a7 IV. I just took a path I'd never taken before. I explored where it went and I found what I thought was a really interesting new angle on this lighthouse. It's really worth just getting out and exploring around your surroundings. And tip number two, which goes hand in hand, and I already said it a little bit as well, is take your time. Don't rush. There's no panic, right? You just have a good time. Enjoy the process. Slow yourself down. The more that I slow myself down, the more I come away with at the end of the shoot, the more I enjoy the shoot. And if you enjoy it, you're bound to get better results by the end of it. I've been guilty of rushing loads of times, and I definitely have either messed up the composition, messed up the shot in total, or actually not come away with the stuff that I could have come away with if I just slowed myself down. Something else you can do to get inspired, tip number three, is to look at some other photographers' work. Now, this isn't always the best thing to do because sometimes you can start comparing yourself, it can get you down. It's definitely worth remembering that people put their best work out there on the internet, so you really are comparing yourself against the absolute best work you can find. But sometimes it's worth having a look at other photographers' work to give you a different angle on things, a different idea about the kinds of shoots you could do. This has really helped me in the past where I'm so focused on one way of doing something, it hasn't even occurred to me to just completely try something just completely different. For example, sunsets can make for perfect photographic opportunities, but what if you face away from the sun? What if you face a different direction and just capture the shadows? That's one example of being focused on the sunset itself and missing the opportunities all around you. And by looking at other photographers' work, sometimes you can remind yourself of other ways to take photos, which can be just as valid and just as important and really mix things up. And it can really help you to get out there, get inspired and do something interesting. The fourth tip is to challenge yourself. There's loads of ways that you can do this. You could try a completely new genre of photography. For example, 
If you love doing landscapes, you love doing portraits, maybe try some food photography. Maybe try some product photography because while it may not be the genre that you've chosen, first of all, you might fall in love with it. But second of all, you'll hone skills that you weren't practicing with those other genres. And sometimes there are certain things you can take from different genres you would never have thought about that then transition over to the genres that you do love. You can always learn something new by trying a new type of photography, a new genre, and really getting yourself outside of that comfort zone. When I went to Goodwood Festival of Speed last year, I hadn't really shot that many cars before. It's not something that I'd really done, but I decided when I went, I was gonna try panning photography. And I basically took the skills that I had from wildlife photography and applied it to cars. They're both fast movie subjects, right? So I just assumed, there's gonna be some overlap here. And it worked. I was really, really happy with the results that I got from that photo shoot there. And it's not something that I'd really done before, but those skills from wildlife were able to transition over to cars. Challenging yourself with a new genre can be a little bit intimidating, but it can be so worth it, especially if you find Actually, I love this. This is also a really good one if it's raining outside, if it's just generally not very nice because you can stay indoors, try something else and try something completely different where you have to apply all kinds of other skills. The last tip to get inspired is to join a local photography club. Now, there's loads of different types of clubs out there, but these can be a really great way of pushing you a little bit beyond your comfort zone, getting you out there. You can make friends, you can try different things, you can sometimes go on photo walks and do it as a community, show your work to others, see other people's work. It kind of encompasses a lot of what we've just talked about as one big thing. It can be a really good way to kind of push yourself with photography, and like I say, make some friends along the way as well. Joining a photography club isn't for everyone, so don't feel bad if it's not something that appeals to you at all, but it can be a really good way to get out of a rut and really get inspired for some more photography. The bonus tip, which I suppose you could call tip number six, but I'm gonna call it the bonus tip, is to take a break. Sometimes you do have to just take a break, switch off, step away from your camera, just give it a week maybe two weeks, whatever it is, just, just take a little moment for yourself. Do something else and then come back to it refreshed, passionate about it and excited. Sometimes you can burn out. You can just take too many photos and it gets too intense, too much. If you give it a couple of weeks, the weather's gonna change, you're gonna miss it a little bit and then you can go back ready to get excited and try something new and it all feels exciting. It can be a very healthy way to approach things and sometimes pretty much with anything in life, you just have to take a little break now and then. Do you have any other tips for how to get inspired? I'd love to hear them, pop them in the comments because I'll be honest, I could always do with a little extra dose of inspiration to get out, take some photos, do something interesting. So let me know in the comments what your top tips for that kind of thing are. How do you get inspired? Otherwise, full list of all the kit that we used for this video and all these photos down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.